Hi, this is Kyle from APS, and I'm going to share with you how to choose sailing foul weather gear for dinghy sailing. Um, this can be a confusing thing uh, because there's so many different options, uh, types of sailing, and weather conditions that you're going to find yourself in. Uh, I'm going to start uh, with the very hot conditions, uh, what you'd wear for that, move through warm, cool, and cold. We'll be going through spray gear, uh, rash guards, uh, hydrophobic gear, uh, neoprene, and dry suits. Okay, our first category is wet wear for hot conditions. I mean, we're talking direct sunlight, you're just sweating, you're trying to keep cool, and you're trying to protect yourself from the sun. So don't forget a really good sunblock, a hat if you can get away with it, and some lightweight uh, material. This is a rash guard. Uh, stretchy, long sleeve, it's not insulating, it breathes, and it's the wet wear category. You intend for spray to fall on the water to be wet uh, and part of keeping you uh, cool. So a top like this, uh, light colors, uh, white being the best, uh, especially on the core. If you needed full leg protection, uh, something like this, a uh, lycra stretch pant with reinforced seat and knees. Um, you've got good shave protection throughout and good sun protection, very stretchy. And again, no insulation. This gets wet, holds a little moisture against your skin. As that moisture evaporates, that actually pulls moisture off or uh, heat away from your body. So evaporation um, keeps you cooler. And if you wanted something shorter, this Lycra stretch uh, short with reinforced seat uh, might be another option for wet weather, uh, wet gear in very hot conditions. Next, we're going to move into dinghy spray gear. Um, if you're going to own one piece of gear uh, as a primary piece, a dinghy smock, a waterproof breathable smock like this um, is absolutely something you want in your gear bag. Uh, it can be used with so many other pieces that we're going to go through. So this is made of a waterproof uh, breathable material. It's a uh, two layer. There's no lining that keeps it light. Uh, this is the actual uh, waterproof breathable coating right there. And what's standard is to have uh, an adjustable neck that can be opened up so you can vent um, some heat out. You've got your adjustable cuffs here at the wrist and then some sort of adjustment. In this case, it's got a neoprene band and adjustments on either side. Um, those are the basic features of a smock top. Match that um, with, and again, the category here, spray gear. So this isn't, uh, this is, you're staying on the boat, you're getting a lot of rain, you're getting a lot of spray, not necessarily designed uh, if you capsize and go in the water and you're swimming about. Uh, it's not going to keep that amount of water out. Um, as we move into the trousers, trousers are, you know, fairly basic. Um, they're about mid-height, reinforced seat and knees um, are standard, adjustable um, suspenders, and then adjustable ankles. So you match this uh, with a base layer on a warmer day, on a cooler day, a base layer and a mid layer underneath, something that wicks moisture to this, uh, allows it to breathe to uh, get the moisture out of the suit is a nice combination. Um, kind of a hybrid is um, a different material that's used basically in just the uh, tops. Um, this is a laminated fleece. It's waterproof, breathable. It's kind of like a soft shell. Um, so it adds um, insulation. So you wouldn't use this on a hot day. This is for a cool weather sailing, and it's quite toasty and nice. Standard seals here at the wrist and down here at the waist. But up here, it's got a soft fleece throughout. And instead of a seal, it has this adjuster here. And you basically just cinch it in using the stretch cord here. Our next category, well, we're back to wet wear, but wet wear for cool weather sailing, not hot. So that means that these pieces are going to give you some insulation to keep you comfortable in cool weather sailing situations where you're going to be wet, whether that's you're in the water or there's a lot of spray or rain. So um, a long sleeve top is kind of standard for this. There are two pieces, tops and bottoms. Um, this is a hydrophobic fleece. So hydrophobic means it doesn't like water, so it likes to shed water. And then the fleece on the inside is like a one millimeter fleece facing. So um, very soft and adds a bit of insulation. Um, you'll notice because of the cuts, they're, they're really uh, kind of second skin kind of fit. 
uh, in this category, kind of like wetsuits, so they're, um, they don't add a lot of bulk, and uh, they're really for uh, very athletic sailing for the most part if you're wearing them on their own. If I move into the tops, uh, I've shown you this piece that was hydrophobic fleece. Um, here's a representative pant, same long hydrophobic fleece. Another option, if you want just a bit more insulation in this category, uh, would be a bottom or a top made with neoprene. Um, and in this case, we're talking one, one and a half millimeters of very thin neoprene. But again, uh, just for cool weather sailing, just enough insulation to keep you comfortable. Okay, going into exclusively wetsuits, now we're talking about conditions where it's cool to cold. And uh, wetsuits keep you dry because they use closed cell neoprene. And the thicker the neoprene, the more insulation, the warmer you're going to be. In this category, you're normally going to see uh, wetsuits for cold, uh, cool to cold sailing in the three, all the way up to five millimeters for cold sailing. Uh, for cooler to cold, maybe two, two and a half millimeter. This feels like about a two and a half. And in this case, this is a shorter uh, cut. Um, it's just below the knees and it's uh, sleeveless. And they also call this a Farmer John top. Uh, so it's a lot of mobility here. So you could match this with a long sleeve uh, top uh, or a rash guard on a little bit warmer day. Um, and that would be a nice standalone piece. You could also wear this with a rash guard um, and a smock top uh, for some more flexibility. As it gets a little bit cooler, I'm going to go up into something that's a full leg uh, wetsuit. Now I can tell uh, this feels like a three, three and a half. It's got a fleece facing on the inside. I've got a warmer piece. It's covering my entire leg. And as I get into colder and colder conditions, I'm going to move closer to a five millimeter thickness and uh, I'm going to go to a full arms uh, suit so that I'm completely covered. Um, the only drawback with a full suit is you choose a five millimeter uh, suit, you can't change the amount of insulation. It's always going to be a very warm uh, suit. So uh, it's going to be dedicated to cold weather sailing. Uh, something like this, you could change the layers that you wear with them, the tops, whether it's an insulated top or just a spandex top, depending on how warm or cold, this might give you a little bit more temperature range um, and flexibility. Okay, our last category is dedicated to cold winter sailing. Um, and that's our dry suit category. Certainly you can use wetsuits, five millimeter steamers and things like that. Uh, but again, you can't really vary how much insulation. With a dry suit, um, they're waterproof, breathable. They're completely dry. I've got a dry suit seal up here that's adjustable by cutting rings and I can change the diameter and customize it to my neck. Same with the wrist here. And then down here, I've got rubber latex booties. Keeps the water all the way out. Front zippers, completely waterproof uh, for entry and exit. Um, now with this, I've got a completely waterproof, uninsulated shell, and the flexibility that I get with a dry suit is I can wear just a base le a layer on a cool to cold day. Uh, or, and uh, if it got really cold, I could put on two or three mid layers and increase uh, my insulation factor. So it gives me a lot of flexibility in terms of staying comfortable temperature wise. And then of course, I can always just fall, jump in the water and stay completely dry. So when it comes to outfitting for dinghy sailing, uh, you can see from these five categories, the mixing and matching, it's really important to think about what are the conditions you're gonna be sailing in um, and what's the duration? How cold is it going to be? How wet is it going to be? Do you need to stay dry because you're going to be on the water, on the boat and use spray gear? Or you're going to have a dry suit in case you go in the water? Or is it a condition where you don't mind being wet, you just want to be warm? So that could be wet wear for uh, hot weather or for uh, cool or wet suits for colder and cool weather. So. For this and more information on foul weather gear, visit us at APS ltd.com